Hey everyone, Craig Warwick here, back with another showcase of my custom action figures and today I'm diving back into the world of Nintendo villainy with not one, but two intergalactic menaces from the Metroid series. It's Ridley and Mother Brain. I made these characters as a pair to be displayed together, but I'm going to look at each of them in turn and tell you a little about their background, features and how I made them. First up, let's take a look at Ridley. The evil leader of the space pirates, the cunning and deadly creature Ridley, is a constant enemy of Samus Aran, appearing in nearly every game in the Metroid series as a major boss. My first exposure to Ridley was in the 1993 Super Nintendo classic Super Metroid, where he dramatically appears in the opening of the game, stealing the baby Metroid to use in his scheme for galactic domination. Ridley's look has evolved over the years from his original appearance as an 8-bit sprite to his modern look of a giant alien dragon pterodactyl thing with long spindly limbs, shrieking fanged mouth, huge wings, grasping claws and a whipping tail. And here's my figure of him. While he may not look it, compared to Mother Brain, Ridley was a simpler figure for me to make, even though there were some real challenges. For Ridley, I took an existing figure, in this case the NECA's Rhino Alien, took it apart, sanded down all the joints to prevent paint rub, cut parts out, added parts on, such as the tail from a NECA Snake Alien, along with fingers and toes using the fangs from that same figure, additional arms for the wings from the NECA Newborn Alien, and another NECA Alien figure's arm for the neck. Listing it back like that, it does remind me that that was a lot of work. I can forget that kind of thing when I get to the end of a project. But anyway, you'll notice there's a lot of use of NECA's alien figures there. The alien figures were ideal for this project because they have long spindly limbs and fairly sturdy joints to support them. I know NECA have a reputation for brittle joints in some figures, but I didn't really have that issue with any that I used here. It's also appropriate as Ridley's character design seems heavily inspired by the design of the alien Xenomorph and even his name is a nod to the director of Alien, Ridley Scott. The big challenges with Ridley were the wings and the head. The wings were actually the first thing I worked on for this custom. If I couldn't get these to work, I wouldn't be able to do the custom at all really. I didn't want hard plastic wings and I wanted the fingers to be poseable and the membrane between them to be flexible. So I focused on using three flexible and lightweight materials. For the flexible fingers, I used floristry wire. For the membrane, I used a pair of tights cut to pieces and stretched between the frame, held in place with super glue and fabric glue. I did consider using latex, but I used latex in my custom of Annihilus from over 10 years ago, and unfortunately, latex rots away over time. To sculpt over the wire of the fingers, I used cause clay. I'd never used this material before, but while googling around for flexible clay options and seeing what other creatives were doing on social media, I decided to give it a try. When baked as directed on the package, cause clay remains flexible, so that's a really useful material. Now, Ridley's head, well, you might not think this would be too much of a challenge as I could just sculpt it from epoxy, but really, it's about the weight. Creating this long thin head from epoxy clay can be difficult because epoxy can get quite brittle when it's thin and to keep it light I really wanted it to be hollow. So long, thin, hollow, those are things that epoxy clay doesn't really work well with. So I turned to 3D printing. Last year I bought myself an Elegoo Mars 3D printer and I used it a little to make simple shapes for my Star Wars and Scooby-Doo customs, but here I wanted to digitally sculpt and print something. I used my iPad, Apple Pencil and Forger and Nomad apps for iOS and I did my best to learn digital sculpting. I just poked around, failed, learned, failed again and learned until I got to the point where I thought I understood enough to sculpt digitally. It was a steep learning curve, but I was able to translate the sketch I had for Ridley into a 3D digital model suitable for printing. So yeah, I printed out the head, attached it, put some wire covered in Procreate putty in the mouth to make a flexible tongue, and that was that. I'm making that seem a lot easier than it was, but if you want to know more, there's literally hours of me making and explaining this figure's creation here on my YouTube channel in my customising live videos. 
So for Ridley, all that really remained was for me to paint him. I used an airbrush and MIG one-shot primer to prime him, then applied colour with a mixture of airbrush and standard brush. I used Citadel paints and I also shaded the wing material with some fabric dye to give it some tone as well. I finished him up with some Vallejo matte varnish over most of him with some gloss varnish to pick out some details such as his eyes, claws and the bones emerging from his head. Ridley stands 12 inches tall from his toes to the top of his head when he's looking forward. Even though I didn't really design him to stand straight up like this, he fits well with my Ganon and Bowser figures. And adding his wings into the equation, or stretching his neck upwards, he could be considered taller than both of those. Articulation wise, he moves at the base of his head on a ball joint. There's articulation at the jaw and a flexible tongue. He has a swivel and a hinge at the midpoint of his neck and a swivel, hinge and swivel again at the base of his neck. His arms rotate at the shoulders and move this far out to the side. There's rotation at the bottom of the bicep, double jointed elbows, rotation and a hinge at the wrist. The fingers are articulated with hinges and his thumb has a hinge and a swivel. He has a diaphragm ball joint Rotation and hinges at the hips, rotation at the top of the thigh, a swivel above the knee, double jointed knees, swivel at the calf, swivel hinges at the ankle, and swivel hinges at each of his toes. There's also a swivel at the base of the tail, and his tail is flexible along its length. His wings are also articulated with swivel hinges at the... I'm going to call these shoulders, swivels and double hinges at the elbows, rotation and swivels at the wrists and each of his fingers is flexible along its length thanks to the floristry wire and cause clay used to construct them. Finally for Ridley I gave him a little accessory for him to steal, the baby Metroid in its containment canister. Again, I 3D printed this as a challenge to myself and to try using transparent resins with admittedly mixed results that I'm happy enough with for this little accessory. And that's Ridley. I'm really happy with how he turned out. But Ridley was never my favourite villain from the Metroid series. I made him more as an accessory for the villain I really wanted to make. And that's Mother Brain. Mother Brain is the literal mastermind behind the evil schemes of the Space Pirates, a biomechanical supercomputer resembling a brain inside a protective glass case. Overseeing the Metroid experiments, Mother Brain was the final boss in the original Metroid game and the seminal and genre-defining Super Metroid. And kids of the 80s and 90s may also remember a comical version of the villain being the main antagonist in the Captain N TV show. Mother Brain is actually my favourite Nintendo villain. Metroid was such a difficult game that the final boss, Mother Brain, seemed almost mythical to me. Unlike Bowser and Ganon, I never made it to Mother Brain, let alone defeated her in the 8-bit games, and I still haven't done it to this day. But when I battled her in the 16-bit era Super Metroid, and she revealed that gross single eye and drooling mouth, she really captured my imagination. Just as an aside, I've always found myself doodling pictures of Mother Brain over the years. Here's one from 2004 that I sent as a silly gift to the man that would become my husband. Here's another from more recent years that was one of the first things I drew when I was practicing digital drawing on my tablet. And it was all to tide me over till I had the ability to make this custom. So here's my Mother Brain. Mother Brain is almost entirely digitally sculpted and printed. I've wanted to make a Mother Brain custom for many, many years, but I've never tackled it because with traditional sculpting with clay, I felt limited to making organic shapes like the brain itself, but was always stumped with how to make the geometric tech and machine parts that make Mother Brain more than just a disembodied brain. But now that 3D printing is a more affordable tool, I was able to tackle this project. I digitally sculpted the brain itself using my iPad, Apple Pencil and the Nomad app. But for all the other parts that required more geometric design, I used the Shaper 3D app. This let me design things to exact sizes so that they would fit together. 
One of the problems with printing something this size is that most of the parts are too large to be printed by my Elgu Mars printer. So I had to split the design up into parts so that I could glue them together once printed. There are a few components that I did not digitally sculpt and print, however. The main one being the transparent tank. I ordered an acrylic display case online and had to design and size all of the parts around the size of the cylinder once it arrived. The tubes emerging from the brain were also just cable tidies I bought online. I also made the eye using traditional sculpting materials and the iris from a doll's eye, painted red, of course. I had thought about filling the tank with fluid, but didn't want to deal with the extra weight, making the container watertight, and all the other complexities that arise from dealing with all of that. So instead, I digitally sculpted and printed columns of bubbles to give the impression of liquid and to fill some of that empty space that's in the tank. The bubbles also ended up helping channel light from the LED lights I installed in Mother Brain's tank. There are battery compartments connected to strips of LEDs around the inside of the base and the lid that are controlled with a remote control. That let me change the light colour and pattern, but I like the pulsing pattern best. I think it suits the idea of the pulsing brain. I just bought these LED light strips off of Amazon really cheap. I finished the custom up with Citadel paints brushed onto the brain and metallic paints airbrushed onto the mechanical parts. I used lots of gloss varnish on the organic parts to make sure that it looked slimy and gross and so that it reflected the lights. Mother Brain is about 10 inches tall and has a diameter of about 9 inches and weighs about 2 kilograms. I really wanted to keep it light and 3D printing all of the parts hollow really helped me do that. And that's my custom of these iconic villains from the Metroid franchise and I hope you guys like them. Viewers may be wondering what I'm going to make next, and to be honest, I'm not really sure. I'm not really interested in making more Nintendo villains, so no Donkey Kong, Dedede, King K. Rool, but maybe some other video game characters would be an interesting project off the top of my head. Maybe some of the characters from Wonder Boy 3 or Monster Boy, something from one of the Soulsborne games, Killer Instinct characters, or maybe I'll move away from video games and do a creature from mythology like Medusa, or maybe go back to Marvel and try to tackle some characters that have been on my to-do list for years like Stardust, Maro, or Madam Web. I've no shortage of ideas, that's for sure. But don't you guys wait for me or anyone else to make a figure you'd like to see from video games, anime, movies, or wherever. Why not give customising action figures a try for yourself? Or if that seems out of your ability, draw a picture, write a story, write a poem, just get creative and see where it takes you. If you want to know more about how I made these customs, I have hours of footage of that here on my channel and my customising live videos, or you can go check out some of my previous customs in this playlist. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please do hit that like button and subscribe. And until next time, pour on the power. Bye-bye.